Why? Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat 333, and welcome back to Suzerain. Now, in the last video, we had our meeting with the Alliance of Nations, and we managed to get a Roomberg sanctioned and uh, guarantees from the whole world that if they try to fuck with us, uh, they will get fucked by the uh, world at large. So that's pretty neat. We also had a good old resign uh, notice of resignation uh, from our good friend uh, David Whiskey. But he also warned me about a potential imminent coup, which uh, is a little concerning. But uh, you know what? We're not going to take threats lying down. We're going to move forward. In fact, we're going to have... Well... We have this question real quick. We'll take the gander at it real quick. My future in Sordon is in doubt. Maybe be the right time to diversify my resources by keeping my money reserves safely broad in the case of unexpected departure. Let's not move. This may be a bad idea, but I feel confident. I think we can do this. So, dinner no. With the election looming, I'd practically been sleeping in the Rune Palace lately, but tonight I made a deliberate attempt effort to get home early. I told Monica and Deanna I'd want a family supper, just like in the old days. Monica had promised to cook something special. The usual crowd of protesters was waiting for me outside the gates of the complex. The guards formed a cordon and let me through. Don't look in I rushed past the guards to my door, when it's inside I locked the front door behind me. I hurried past them, went inside and locked the door front door behind me. I heard footsteps coming away. Hi, Papa! I opened my arms to embrace my daughter. She hugged me back happily. How was school today? Deanna shrugged. I won a prize at the science fair. Honestly, I think they were teaching girls different stuff before because they knew we were smarter than boys. You might be right. Deanna smiled. Mom was in there. I I've got some homework before dinner. I followed her with my eyes as she went upstairs. She was starting to look more and more like her mother. I stepped into the kitchen. Monica was stirring a pot on the stove. Her back turned to me. I snuck up Monica and gave her a hug. She screamed and dropped her ladle. God, Anton, don't start on me like that. You know I'm still on edge after the parade. Hey, can a man greet his wife? Yes, of course. Just walk in a little more loudly next time. Why don't you go fix yourself a drink in the living room? I'll let you know when dinner's ready. I sat down in the living room, poured myself a, little, a bit of whiskey, and flipped through one of Monica's women's magazines. Took me a second to realize Monica herself was on the cover. The headline, Sorlin's Woman of the Year. Deanna came rushing back down towards the stairs and made a beeline for the coffee table. She picked up her pencil case. Almost forgot that. What do you hear from your brother these days? Not much. He writes me letters sometimes. Papa, are we a socialist hive mind? Frank's just been spending too much time in Arcasia, sweetie. Monica appeared in the doorway. She smiled at the two of us. Dinner's ready. The three of us gathered around the dining room table. Monica ladled out bowls full of Zabla. The stew tasted as good as it smelled. Now that we're all here, I, uh, wanted to say something. You no, know, the past four years have been hard on all of us. So busy focusing on the needs of the source of people that sometimes forgot about Sorlin's most important people. My own wife and daughter. I hope I can make it up to you someday. Monica's eyes are shining. Once the election's over, I'm taking you both on holiday. Monica sighed heavily. Anton, I, I think you should quit politics, not just drop out of the elections, uh, retire. I can't. I've come too far. But everything that's happened, I don't think you belong in government. Of course, I don't want to lose this progress we made for women, but I'm afraid that'll happen anyway. You being president hasn't been easy on any of us. Maybe we could go back to the things we were before. <sighs> Sorry, Monica. I've got to keep going. Monica's lips formed a thin line. He never did know when to give up. Can we finish dinner now? Of course. Three of us finished our food in silence. Once we cleared our plates, I went up to my study. I still had work to do. Air Force issues civilian flight warning. 
Well, that seems concerning, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I don't like this. I woke up to a loud knock on the door. Yep. I managed to open my eyes and look at the clock. It was 11.58 p.m. Who could it be at this hour? Huffing and puffing, I put on my slippers. I look at the other side of the bed. Monica was sleeping soundly. I walked, started walking downstairs. I heard another knock on the door. Louder this time. All right, all right. I'm coming. Another knock, this time even louder. Look through the people. I could see Yosef standing outside, accompanied by a few soldiers. I opened the door and looked outside. I was met with 23 men waiting near personnel trucks, all in full combat gear. As I opened the door wider, they started moving towards me. Explain yourselves. Immediately. No one replied, and several soldiers stormed past me into the house. They entered and went through the other room, checking for threats. Once they were done, they stood ready. Yosef walked in, soldiers saluted him. Do you think you can just get away with this? I'm sorry, but your time is over, Mr. President. You're under arrest for your crimes against Sorlin. Above all else, you've committed high treason and conspired against the will of the people. How long have you been planning this? Since the day you betrayed your country. The military had no choice but to take over the government to ensure the well-being of Sorlin and its people. The Grand National Assembly is healed by abolished along with the immunity of members of Parliament. In addition, a curfew is now in effect, and all gatherings are banned until further notice. All government officials suspected of betraying their country will be tried in a military court and made to answer for their crimes. That includes you, Mr. President. You're destroying our democracy. No, we are protecting our country. Take him away. I don't want to see his face. He'll wait in a cell in Antle Rock Prison until his trial. Soldiers start approaching me. No, Don, no! I won't let you take him! Deanna appeared at the top of the stairs. She rubbed her eyes in disbelief. M mama Wh where are they taking him? Monica pulled on my jacket. A soldier moved in front and shoved her away forcefully. Tears welled up in her eyes. Hey, Anton. We'll get through this. I promise. No, you can't take him away! Please! This is unconstitutional! Now the soldier pulled out, pulled out handcuffs. There's no need for handcuffs. I know when I know. I know when I have no way out. The soldier stopped in his tracks and looked at Yosef for confirmation. He nodded. His men escorted me to the truck. I realized I still had my slippers on. They roughly shoved me in the back of the vehicle as they would a common criminal. The engine rumbled to life and the truck started moving. Well, we lost some budget. Well, <coughs> that sucks. Sometime later. I'm gonna sneeze again, goddammit. Huh? <coughs> Excuse me. I was making my 14 scratch on the wall and the warden opened the cell door. My first time seeing a prison, first since the military detained me. He put his handcuffs on my wrist and we started walking. Barely had enough energy to ask where we were going, I just assumed the worst. He told me today was the day of a trial. While we were walking, I got a glimpse of my reflection in a metal door. My beard had grown, my cheeks were sunken. The conditions I was, or held in were showing. It was only one load in the prison truck. After a couple hours had passed, we finally came to a stop. After I exited the vehicle, I had my head up and saw the insignia of a Supreme Court. Soldiers grabbed my arms and led me aside. They gestured towards the table in the courtroom. I took my place at the table. 
Looking around, I saw the flags of the Swords Armed Forces hanging down from the walls, covering the crest of the Supreme Court. The room was completely empty except for me and the soldiers on guard. I looked at the vacant seats on the bench. The door opened, and General Yosef Lanta, Lancha entered alone. The soldier, we were saluted, and he saluted back. I watched him take his seat comfortably. Normally, you're supposed to rise when a judge enters this room, Mr. Rain. You're no judge. You're just a usurper. Cranky, aren't we? I suppose that's what's, what staying in a cell for weeks does to people. There's no more time to waste. Let's begin. This military court will now handle the case of Anton Rain, the former president of Swordland. Do you know why you are here? No, I don't. Huh. As expected, acting innocent till the end. You're accused of high treason against Swordland, Mr. Rain. There's any betrayal here. It's yours against your democratically elected president and government. Shut your mouth. You only speak when you are spoken to. You have failed to govern your people, and Ed, as a result of your actions, they are revolting. If you can't put an end to this, then we will. You spat on the very foundation of this co this country was built upon. From but Colonel Soule, the founder of our republic, on a trial. It's clear to me that you are actively trying to destroy our country from the inside. And Andrew Sordland must pay the ultimate price. What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Rain? Dragged Sordland out of a session and brought us to a golden age. Without me, this republic would have crumbled. The people see me as a hero. The people have yet to know the cost it took, Mr. Rain. Well, they know of your crimes. No one will still stand by you. Doesn't matter what I say, does it? No. Not really. His mouth twitched up, which does a smirk started forming on his face. I see what this is. This is a ploy to end source democracy along with my presidency. I won't play along. Your lies know no bound. Fortunately, we don't care if you play along or not. Just get on with it, then. Finish it. Gladly. He also walked towards me and leaned in as he murmured faintly. Don't worry too much, Mr. Rain. We'll make good use of the economy you left for us. I stared into his eyes. He swiftly moved back and adjusted his uniform before continuing. No need to lay this further. I will now announce a verdict on this case. Yosef <sighs> Lancha tapped the gavel. The sound echoed from in the interview courtroom. He rose from his seat. Knowing what was coming next, you felt like you did your best for Sorlin, no matter what. The next words you heard were, I hereby decide that you are guilty. You thought about how you would go down in history as the victim of yet another one of Sorlin's coups. But he wasn't done speaking. For the magnitude of the crimes you've committed against Sorlin, I'm sentencing you to life in prison. Soldiers grabbed your arms and started walking you towards the door. As you were walking, you worried about the future of your family. Your cell was cold, lonely. The only decorations you put on the on the damp, dark walls were photos of Frank and Deanna. For a while, reading was the only thing you could do. After finishing the precious book sent by Monica, you kept yourself busy writing your own memoir. You were happy that at least your family was allowed to visit once a month. Time flies in jail. You learned in prison that after two years, the military junta finally gave power back to the people. The political party and the Grand National Assembly were established. You hoped that someone would hang Yosef for his crimes. Frank visited you for the first time in years, bringing along his wife and son. Remind you of your own family in better times. You held your grandson for the first time. He squirmed and started crying in your arms. Frank told you that he joined the ranks of the People's Freedom and Justice Party. You told him not to get too deep into politics. 
After 70 years in jail, Stolen's new president finally granted amnesty to local prisoners from the military rule days. You looked yourself in the mirror as you were packing up your belongings to leave. You've grown old. You took your first steps outside. Freedom felt good. Monica, Deanna, and Frank were waiting for you. Unfortunately, the years hadn't been kind to Monica. But they hadn't been kind to you either. Getting used to a free man took years. You finally felt confident enough to plan out what to do with the rest of your life. You chose to find an earnest job. Life was good. You took up woodworking and became a carpenter. It was a menial job, but at least it was honest. You had to get by somehow. A week after your 66th birthday, a woman knocked on your door. She was a young upstart journalist fascinated by your life story. No matter what you did, she kept coming back. Finally, you gave in. She said she was working on a book about you. You helped her as best you could. After many hours of interviews, she said that she had enough information and disappeared from your wife. You looked up a name she'd given you, but you couldn't find it anywhere. You suspected she used an alias. You wondered why. You heard a knock on the door. It was a delivery man with a large, heavy package. The package was filled with copies of books. There was a small note on top of it. Thank you. Carol Sarkas. You picked up the book. It was titled, Suzerain, The Story of Anton Rain. Your family smiled. Well. Ooh. Well, let's see what we got. We are right in the, uh, right in the center over here, it looks like. They weren't joking when they called us a centrist, were they? Well. Between 1954 and 1958, during the coup, 33 soldiers and 1,403 protesters were killed. 146,399 protesters were detained. A 1% fewer maternal deaths were recorded. During protests, three billion soldiers surrendered worth of public property and it was done, and 2,822 arrests were made. 779 people were killed during the clashes between the Red Youth and Young Swords. 86,450 soldiers became unemployed. 3,390 people of polluted descent were jailed and 239 were killed. 4,109 state officials were arrested for corruption charges. That's better. 614,470 women joined the workforce and 105,308 girls were enrolled in, at secondary education for the first time. 13,142 businesses were founded, that's good. And 295,498 students left secondary education without graduating, that's not so nice. Well, history remember you as a centrist. You know, it was a rough go of it. Actually, I don't know if it was. We still had a pretty good go. Um, had some decent economic stuff. Suzerain, developed by Torpor Games. Let's give a round of applause to Torpor Games. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, um, solid game. I gotta say, um, I want to, once again, let me think a few people to think real quick. Um, Top Mac on the Discord, it's like Yonko or something on YouTube. He has like 80 fucking different names, um, and he always changes them. Uh, Bulgarian, the guy who recommended this game to me. Uh, thank you for that. It was a good recommendation, and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I also like to thank all everyone who ended up watching this series um these uh one-off or these different non e4 or poi4 paradox lps they can be kind of hit or miss sometimes and uh while this didn't quite have the views of some of the other hoi4 series i was still pretty impressed with uh the views that i got on this because uh they're not it wasn't too bad so Thank you guys for watching all this. 
Um, I'd be down to try this out again in the future. Um, probably not going to do a wholesome democratic run because we saw where that fucking got me. Uh, maybe be a bit more ruthless next time, but I'm not yet sure how we're going to do that. Uh, but it's up to uh, you guys. If you have any suggestions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Um, I had to think of things to do different. Um... I might have handled the protest a little differently. I would have seen if I could negotiate with them and see if that would have fixed things. Um, I think we did a lot of decent stuff. We got a halfway decent constitution passed. We did it with no corruption. We had the people pissed off at me, but um, it is what it is there. We survived an assassination attempt. And just overall, I think we made Stormlight a better place. Now, the military had to go ahead and fuck that up, but, uh, hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, my friends. If you like this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. Um, if you have any comments, feedback, and certainly leave in the comment section below. I read the co all the comments again. I do appreciate any all feedback you might have for me. Um, I did end up not fleeing, one, because it did feel more appropriate thematically, but I also had a commenter say to keep going. Um, so, uh, i pull up the name right now, but actually I could probably do that on my phone. Um, so I decided to do that on, uh, due to, uh, wrong button, Austin Matney. Um, which I, I don't know if he, uh, fully realized what was going to happen. I ended up uh, accepting uh, or continuing forward because he did mention he didn't know uh, how the coup goes down. So uh, I wonder if that would have changed his response. But either way, I do appreciate uh, your comments and all your comments really throughout all this. And um, yeah. So shout out to Austin and shout out to all the other YouTube commenters. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know a lot of people were pleasantly surprised to see me playing this game and I hope that... Uh, I did some justice. Also, if any devs are watching, well done. I appreciate it. If you want to, see me do, uh, if you want to keep up to date with uh, me playing maybe more Suzer in the future, but at the very least, uh, a lot of strategy games and stuff like that, hit the sub button. As well as um, even the notification bell if you really want to stay up to date to it, because uh, YouTube algorithms can be weird sometimes. It doesn't always tell you uh, what, what's coming out when properly. Um, trying to think what anything else. Um, check out my Discord, uh, check out my second channel, check out, my, uh, check out my Twitch, and check out my Patreon if any of those interest you. Discord is a good place to reach me. Twitch, you can see me do live games. Uh, I do a decent amount of recording on there. Not this one, or, uh, but uh, most of the series that I've had going on recently, I record for first on Twitch and then upload to YouTube. So if you're interested in any of those, Patreon's your show if you want to support them financially. It's fine if you don't, uh, but if you want to, go for it. And then second channel, I mean, you can upload shit on there, but uh, or work on shit for that. But that's gonna be my non-gaming laying stuff. So if any of that interests you, check it out. And um, that's really about it. Uh, one more time, I might sound like a broken record, but thank you all for watching. I had a lot of fun. Um, and I don't know what's next, uh, but we'll wait and see, won't we? My name has been D Mr. Dogboat three three three. Stay beautiful, and stay hydrated, my friends. Bye-bye.